Hi everybody. Hope everyone's keeping happy and healthy and safe at home. It's Kasha from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library and we're doing our very first uh, STEAM story time. Um, so I just want to say hi to everybody before I turn the camera around um, so you can see what we've got on the table down here. Um, but I'm very excited. This is a really popular program that we have at the library um, and I couldn't wait to um, start doing it live streamed virtually because I miss all of you and I hope you're keeping well and let's get started. So there's my little, oh, sorry about the camera adjustments. Here is the table that I'm going to be working from. And yes, it's STEAM story time. So the very first one um, that we're doing as a, a live stream from the Niagara on the Lake Public Library. Um, so we're going to be running through a few different activities, a few different books. Um, the theme today is Friendship Keeps Us Afloat. So I wonder if you can think of what we're going to be exploring today. I'll give you a hint. Friendship. <laughs> um, the importance of friendship and why it's important to be a good friend. Um, and... Um, sinking and floating. So we're going to be doing some experiments with sinking and floating. Okay, so I see a couple people are tuned in. Hi, everybody. Um, so we're going to start with our first book. So the first book that we have, I'll move this out of the way. The first book that we have um, is called Friend Shape. Actually, before we go into that, though, I'm just gonna put this up. We'll just wait a couple more minutes. I realize I started a minute or two early. So I'll run through all that again. Um, but Steam Storytime um, is a program that we usually run every Wednesday morning at 11 o'clock at the library. And if you're not sure what Steam stands for, um, it's for science, technology, engineering, art, and math. So every um, Wednesday we do a story time ages, for ages three to five, typically and we explore these areas. So anything about science, technology, engineering, art, and math. Um, so we go through a little bit of everything. Hi, Emmett and Ali. hope you guys are good. <laughs> um, so what we're gonna do today is some of those um, ideas. So we're gonna go through sinking and floating. Um, we're gonna talk about what it means to be a friend. We're gonna look at different shapes. It's going to be a good one. And I've been looking forward to it for a couple of days. So I hope you have been too. Okay, so. Let's move this out of the way. We'll get into our first book. And this is one of my boys' favorites. They have loved this book since they were little. Um, it's one of my favorites too. And don't be surprised if they pop in, if they hear me reading it. <laughs> As Frankie looks around the corner. <laughs> um, yes, so it's Friend Shape. And it is by Amy Krauss Rosenthal and Tom Lichtenheld. And it is published by the wonderful people at Scholastic Publishing Company in 2015. Um, so thank you for letting us uh, use this book today. It's one of our favorites and we're excited to share it with some wonderful people who are tuning in. Thanks for tuning in everybody. So friend shape, let's start. Friends shape who we are. Friend shape. We're good buddies, great pals, four amigos, besties. What's so great about having friends? We're glad you asked. C, the great thing about having friends is everything. Friends make you feel happy. Do you guys see that there's a face here? Sure. I just got a note to move the book like this. Is that easier for everybody? I see it cuts off a little bit. That's what I was worried about. Let's see if I can adjust this. Does that work better? Everybody thumbs up if it's a little bit better of an angle. You can see all my stuff that I was hiding. <laughs> um, friends make you feel at home. Welcome. We rolled out the red carpet for you. Friends know how to make their own fun. Faster, faster, you guys are wearing me out. You're going to be a rectangle, <laughs> like a rectangle, just like that. Friends, 
play fair and square. Do you guys see the square there? Four sides, that's a square. Your turn next, okay? That's a wonderful thing to say to a friend, to share and take turns. Friends sometimes think the exact same thing at the exact same time. So they're all thinking about bananas, maybe bananas for a snack. Actually, that sounds really delicious. Friends welcome others to join in. Glad you could, so glad you could stop by. Does anyone recognize that? I think it's a stop sign because it's got eight sides. Ready? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight sides for a stop sign. <laughs> now, friends may quarrel, are so, am not, did so, did not, but they don't stay bent out of shape for long. I'm sorry, me too. You know, you have a good point. Actually, you've got three points, because he's a triangle. <laughs> Friends will follow each other to the moon and back. So it looks like a rocket ship going to the moon. Friends stick together for all of life's ups, uh-oh, and downs. <laughs> Friends are always there for you to lean on. Thanks again for your support. And he's leaning on the triangle. Friends are a gift because they fill our lives with joy and love. L-O-V-E. So they use the shapes to look like the letters. It's kind of cool. Friends to the end. Awesome. Okay, so again, that was Friend Shape by Amy Krauss Rosenthal and Tom Lichtenheld. Um, and it was published by, it is published by Scholastic. So there are four shapes on this cover of the book. Um, what four do you see? So you can just say them out loud because I know you can, I can't hear you right now, but we've got a circle, we've got a rectangle, we've got a triangle, and we've got a square, or right now it looks kind of like a diamond, but a diamond is actually just a square turned on one of its points, just like that. So what we can do, what's one thing that I can, thought we could do today, and you don't have to do it with me right now, um, all these videos that we're gonna be posting will be available um, on our YouTube channel afterwards, so if you just wanna watch for now to get some ideas, these are some things you can do later in the day. So I have some Play-Doh, and I have some sticks, and what we can do is make these shapes using Play-Doh and toothpicks. You probably already have an idea how. Hopefully everyone can see everything. There we go. So let's start with a rectangle. So rectangle is orange, so I'm gonna make use orange. And I'm going to make one, two, three, four, five, six. So I'm gonna make six little orange balls like this. So one, two, three, four, and I hope you're counting with me. Five and six. Now see how I'm rolling? I'm putting it right in the middle of my hand and rolling between my palms, just like that. You can also roll on the table like this and do little circles with your hands. So to make the rectangle, I'm going to put those two like that. So that's the top of my rectangle right there. And I'm going to make the other side of my rectangle, which is going to be right here. Now, if I put two like this, I would only be making a square, which is what we're gonna make next. But instead, I'm going to join it here, add one there, join another one here, add one there. And look, I've doubled the length and made a rectangle. Cool, eh? I love building things, especially with Play-Doh. Play-Doh is one of my favorite things to use. So we have made, ta-da, a rectangle. So the next one we're gonna make is a green what? What is that? Say it out loud. I know I can't hear you. It's a triangle. So we need to make three balls like this. One, two, three for the three points where the toothpicks are going to meet. So one, two, and three. It's half as many as we made for that rectangle because that rectangle we needed six and this one we only need three. So we're going to go one, two, 
the root, or one and two. <laughs> and the last one here. So I've made a rectangle. Ta-da! The next one we're gonna make is a square. Yes, Frankie. Go ahead, sweetie. <laughs> so I'm gonna make four balls like this out of yellow for the square because we need four points. One, two, three, four. Easy peasy. And it's kind of like when we started with a rectangle, except we don't need to put this middle one in here. So it's one, two. I keep counting two early. Like that. Like that. And look, we have made our square. So we have our rectangle, we have our triangle, and we have our square. Or if we put it this way, it kind of looks like a diamond. But we're gonna keep it like that. Now, to make the circle, it's kind of tricky to do with the toothpicks. Because circles don't really have sides, right? They're just one rounded spot. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take my Play-Doh. I'm gonna move these over a little bit. Take my Play-Doh. And I'm gonna roll a snake. Now see how I'm pressing with my fingers? This Play-Doh is a little bit dry. I'm pressing with my fingers and I'm gonna make a long snake or a worm, I guess, kind of like a worm, just like so. And then to make the circle, I'm gonna join the ends and look, just like that. It's kind of like a really skinny donut. So we've made rectangle, triangle, square, and a circle. So we made all four shapes that are in the friend shape book. All right, so we're gonna move on to the next book. And this is another one of my boys' favorites. I'm gonna put these on here, just like that. Awesome, and that's something you can do afterwards, especially if you don't have all the stuff ready. No problem, these videos are going to be posted on our YouTube channel afterwards to watch them whenever you have a chance. So the next book we're gonna read is another one of our favorites. It is Stick and Stone by Beth Ferry and also by Tom Lichtenheld. I realized after I picked these two books that they're illustrated by the same person. I'm not sure if you recognize the face on there. Um, and this book is published by the wonderful people at Houghton Mifflin Harcourt Publishing Company. And it was published in 2015. And thank you um, to them for letting us uh, share this book with some wonderful people online today. So stick and stone right here. They're so happy. Also another book about friendship. Now I hope this is gonna fit on the page. If not, I'll go page by page. So stick. Stone, lonely, alone, zero, a one. Alone is no fun. Stick, stone, along comes pine cone makes fun of stone. Won't leave him alone. Vanish, says stick. He's sticking up for his friend. His word does the trick. <laughs> Pinecone leaves. Stone is happy. And look, stick is giving stone the thumbs up. Stone whispers, gee, you stuck up for me. That's just what sticks do. Friends do it too. Stick, stone, no longer alone. Stick, stone, a friendship has grown. And stick is blowing some bubbles just like that. They wander, explore, Lays by the shore. I wish I was at that beach right now. <laughs> then thunder and rain. Boom! A loud hurricane. Stick is wind blown. Mm, there goes pine cone. 
Hold on, calls out Stone. Hi, Jay. I'll turn the camera around in a minute <laughs> to say hi. Again, he's alone. Search day, stick, 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 and search night. No stick in sight. What's this? A huge puddle. <gasps> stick stuck in the muddle. Help. Stone rescues him quick. He rolls down the hill. He bounces off a log. Cowabunga! Pew. Curse bloosh. <laughs> Look at Stick's little face. <laughs> so go. Like, uh -oh. You rock, Stone, says Stick. That's just what stones do. Best friendship rocks too. Stick, stone, together again. Stick, stone, a perfect 10. To look, the stick next to the stone look like the number, look like the number 10. <laughs> to the end. And look, Pinecone saying, sorry, I needled you so much. So he's kind of saying sorry for picking on stone, I think. So what awesome friends, eh? Stick and Stone, best friends. So again, that was Stick and Stone by Beth Berry and Tom Lichtenheld, published by um, the people at Huffton Mifflin Harcourt Publishing Company in 2015. So that's one of our favorites. Um, I'm not sure if any of you have the app called Vooks. Um, there is a really cute animated version of this on Vooks that my boys absolutely love. Um, and I think actually Vooks right now, um, because of the circumstances, is actually free. So I do highly recommend that app. Oh, actually, we need this book still. So stick and stone. Um, the next activity we're gonna do reminded me, I got the idea from um, on this page. Let me find it. Right on this one, because stick is stuck in the mud, in a puddle, in some water. Um, and I wondered about if stone would get stuck too. Now, my puddle doesn't have any mud, but it's right here. Let me just make sure it's in the right spot. So I, also, I have some water in this dish and we're gonna see if stuff that I have prepared is going to sink or float. Now, if you look at my water, I made it blue, um, only because the way that I'm filming, um, It'll be easier to see if something is down deeper in the water, the more blue it is, okay? So I have three things that we just read about. I have a stick, actually I have sticks. I have a stone and I have a pine cone. And this pine cone is actually a really big one. Um, we have a tree in our front yard that makes these beautiful pine cones, but only like two a year. <laughs> so let's see what's going to sink and what's gonna float. So let's start with a stick. I'll do two sticks. So what do you think? So just talk to the people that you're watching with. Do you think it's gonna sink or it's gonna float? Hmm. Okay, are we ready to see? One, two, three. Ooh, it's floating right on the top of the water. So that means it's less dense than the water because wood is actually full of air and those little air pockets keep it afloat in the water, just like that. So we know that sticks float. Next thing we're gonna do is see if our stone can float. What do you think? So just talk to the people that's with you in the room. What do you think is gonna happen? Is it gonna sink or float? Some of you might already know. If you have been to a pond or the lake or anything and you've thrown stones, what happens to them? They, ooh, <laughs> they sink and they make lots of noise. <laughs> um, so this stone sunk. It means it's denser than the water. So there's no air pockets in the stone that keep it afloat. It's very heavy and it sinks right to the bottom of my little water dish here. Now let's see. We know that things that are full of air float. We know that things that are very dense sink. So what can we think about what's gonna happen to this pine cone? Is it gonna sink or is it gonna float? Hmm, well it's open. There's all these little spots and inside those spots are air but the inside is not covered in, or not open, it's very close, so let's see. So take a guess, make an estimate, tell the person that you're with, let's see what's gonna happen. Ready, one, two, three. Oh, 
it floats. This pine cone floats in the water. Even if I push it down, it pops right back up. Can you see that? So if I push it down, it gets darker blue because it's deep down there, but look, it comes right back to the top. Okay, so we have these things that are sinking and floating. So stick some pine cones float, stones sink. I have some other nature items that I looked for outside and we're gonna see if they sink or float as well. So we have a stick and this is a very dirty stick. <laughs> um, it's kind of the same idea as this. So what do you think is gonna happen? It's just a bigger version of it. So it's a bigger stick. So make a prediction with the people that you're with. Ready? One, two, three. It floats. This stick is lighter than the water, is less dense than the water, and there's little air bubbles in there and it floats. Now, this is another stick too. Yeah, it's gonna float. What about this one? This one is an acorn. Let's see what's gonna happen. Mm, there must be an air pocket in there because it is floating. Now this one here, this is a beech nut. So this was a nut that came off a tree and it looks like something ate it, probably a squirrel. And there's lots of little holes. So sometimes if there are holes, what's gonna happen? If you think of a boat that has a hole, what sometimes happens to that boat? It sinks. So let's see if that's gonna happen. It's pretty heavy too. See, ready? One, two, three, yep, plunk. Did you guys hear that? It sunk right to the bottom. So we have some maple keys. I wonder if those are gonna sink or float as well. Let's see. Hmm, I think they're gonna float because they are very light. If you've ever picked up a maple key before, they are super duper light. Now this one, this is a piece of a hydrangea blossom. So something that bloomed last year that lived on the plant all winter and it dried out. It's very, very crunchy, if you guys can hear that. Now this one, what do you think is gonna happen? It's light and it's dry. So talk to the people that you're in the room with, make a guess, what do you think is gonna happen? And it floats. Now I wonder if I push it down is it gonna sink or float? Oh, part of it floats, but part of it is under the water. Hmm, interesting, very interesting. So this is something that you can do with nature stuff that you find around your house. Anything from your backyard, um, you can see if it's gonna sink or float. Ask your parents for a little dish of water to do some experiments, because steam story time is all about experimenting and trying stuff out. So the other thing that I have is I've got some stuff from my kitchen and my boys play area. So I have a lemon. What do you think? Sink or float? Well, the lemon is full of liquid. Um, it's got all the lemon juice inside and it's full of all the stuff on the inside of a lemon. Um, but I wonder, let's see. Huh. It's floating. That means there must be little pockets of air inside this lemon that's keeping it afloat. Oh, see how it rolls too? It's pretty neat. All right. So speaking of that, let's not go too far. We have, oops, oh, <laughs> we know what happens. It's a ping pong ball. It's full of air. It's gonna float. These things are very bouncy. It rolls right on the top. Even if I push it down, it pops right back up. The air is making it up right back up to the surface, making my table all wet, which is awesome. Now, this is James. He's a mini train. He's plastic all the way through. I know that because I have stepped on one and it's broken and I saw that it is plastic all the way through. So if there's no air in it, what do you think is gonna happen? It's gonna sink or float? Let's see. Oh yeah, he sinks, totally sinks. He's very dense, he sinks right down to the bottom. Now, we have an egg. What's inside an egg? There is yolk and there's the egg white. So there's that yellow little bit, that little round thing that's called the yolk, and there is an egg white which surrounds the rest of the egg. And this is an uncooked egg. So let's see what's gonna happen. I'm gonna do it really carefully because what happens to eggs if you drop them really hard? Yeah, they break and they make a big mess. And I'm all about mess but maybe not egg on my table today. So let's see, I'm gonna put them very carefully. <gasps> it sinks. See how far down? The bluer it is, the farther down it is. So this egg 
is very, is heavier, is more dense than the water. Mm -hmm. Now a cool thing to try is, especially with um, the weekend coming, if you have a boiled egg, see if that one's gonna sink or float. Mm. Piece of paper is going to float just like that until we push it. And all those little air pockets, if you have a microscope, you could see that inside this, this paper, there's little tiny pockets of air. And right now they're full of air. But as the paper gets wet, those air pockets fill with water instead of air and it will start to sink. So let's leave it there and see what happens. Oh, see, it's already starting to get heavier and heavier. Now this one, this one is gonna take us into our next activity that you can do at home. This is a cup. Right now, it's filled with nothing. But is it really nothing? It's actually full of air in here. So if we put the cup like this, it floats because this air makes it less dense than the water, right? We made like a little boat here. We can actually even put this little guy in here like that. Oh, see how it almost tipped? It's getting too heavy on one side. So let's take this out. Now, if we push the cup down and push the cup down and start filling it with water, let's see, is it still going to float or sink? Oh, so it still floats because inside that plastic, there are little pockets of air, but the cup is heavier, so it sinks further into the water. So things that are heavier and more dense sink, especially when they fill with water. Okay, so these are some things you can try. I would love to hear what you have experimented with at home, what kind of stuff you saw that sunk or float. I would love to hear all about it. And I'm very proud of myself that I didn't break that egg. Mm -hmm. So move this water here, and that's still right in the middle for everybody. So the take home challenge from today, since we've looked at books about friendship and being a good friend, we've made some shapes with Play-Doh, um, we've gone over some shapes, we talked about sinking and floating and did some floating and sinking experiments. What your take home challenge is, is to build a raft or a boat out of Lego or Duplo and see if you can make one that floats or sinks. So I have these two little ones here. Actually, my, my boys made this, I made these. I kind of took certain parts apart and put them back together to make two different kinds of boats. So this one is a smaller boat, but it's tall like that. Um, and it's um, not as wide. And this one is a wider boat, just like so. So let's see. This one, I think it's gonna float or sink. I'll hold it this way so you can take a look. Float or sink, what do we think? Ooh, it rhymed. I love accidental rhyming. Let's see, is it gonna, oh, well, it floats, but it's too heavy on the top. I wonder if I took a little bit of this off, if it would be better. A little bit, oh no. It's, I wouldn't really wanna be on that boat. Hmm. Not very sturdy in the water. Maybe we have to rework that design. Now I wonder about this one. What do you think? Is that gonna, is this boat gonna float? This quick little raft I made, is it gonna float? What do we think? Ready? One, two, three. Huh, it does. It's kind of the same idea as the cup. So this empty part in here is kind of like how the cup was filled with air. So it means that it is a little bit lighter than the water because this pocket of air keeps it up. Um, if we push this down though, see how it sinks a little bit more because the water that's in there now filled that air space that was in here and it made it heavier. It still floats because Lego has air pockets inside its plastic, but it sinks a bit more. So I would love for you to design a boat or a raft or an island or a city. Ooh, that's exciting. And see if it will sink or float in some water. Okay. So I'm just gonna wipe my hands off. Um, I just want to say thank you all. Oh, there's my messy table. <laughs> thank you all for joining me today. Hopefully you had fun. Um, it's definitely not the same as our regular steam story time, um, but it, 
allowed me to share some of our ideas with you and see everyone again. So hopefully everyone's keeping ha happy and healthy and safe. And hi, Jay. And hi, Emmett and Allie again. Um, and everyone else who tuned in, thank you so much for joining us for the first Steam story time that we're doing virtually. We're going to be doing one every single Wednesday um, at 11 o'clock. So tune in here. If you can't make it for that time, don't worry. We're going to be posting all of the videos on our YouTube channel afterwards. Also, I forgot to mention, yesterday, if you look on our Facebook page, we have been posting a steam challenge. So this week's challenge is to make a tinfoil boat or a raft, kind of like what I did with our steam story time Lego. And from there, we wanna see, hi Nicholas. <laughs> we wanna see how many pennies or coins your raft can hold. So that's what I'm gonna be doing later with my boys, okay? So we'd love to see your Lego rafts, your steam challenge, tinfoil, coin holding rafts. Um, I'd love to hear what you think. So if you have any questions or feedback, please send me an email at kdepuy at nautilpl.org um, or message us on here. Okay, have a wonderful afternoon, everyone, and we'll see you next week. Okay, bye. <laughs>